Hello and welcome into Game Night on the Paladin Network. I'm Steven Dixon. He's Pearson Fowler. We're going to be talking about the biggest NFL surprises so far. We're only two weeks in. Chrissy Dell has been telling us that we shouldn't be overreacting uh, to certain teams, but we're going to give just a few surprises to the NFL season. Pearson, who's, your, who's been your biggest surprise? For me, I'd have to say the biggest surprise has been the New Orleans Saints. I know they were a lot of people's favorite to make it to the Super Bowl or at least the NFC Championship game. They had the fourth best defense in the NFL, and they've been, frankly, just terrible uh, defensively this year. They gave up 500 yards of offense to the Falcons, 400 through the air from Matt Ryan, which Matt Ryan is a good quarterback, and those wide receivers are, when healthy, a lethal group to contend with between the size and physicality of Roddy White and Julio Jones. But they're not unbeatable either because we saw what Cincinnati did to them last week. Yeah, yeah, absolutely, which just further proves that the Saints defense is not where it was last year, which is interesting. And they also haven't been scoring as much as I figured that they would. They have a new emerging star in Brandon Cooks who's been good, but they just haven't been particularly good on either side of the ball. Granted, they have been on the road, and we know the Saints are a completely different team when they're on the road. They'll be at home for the first time this year, this coming Sunday, so we'll see how that turns out. Yeah, I'm going to go with the Houston Texans because, okay, last year they did start 2-0. and They went 2-14 and in the year. I don't think that's going to happen this time. Playing a lot better defense. But it's, it's not even just a theme around the Texans. It's the fact that the Buffalo Bills, Houston Texans, and Arizona Cardinals are all in first place after the first two weeks. If you would have told me before the season that the Patriots, that the Colts, and San Francisco or Seattle weren't in first place in all those respective divisions, I'd be surprised. So I really am uh, pleasantly surprised by how well Houston's played. I, I figured they were going to be one of the worst teams in the NFL. They've Proved me wrong so far. Their defense, led by J.J. Watt, has been outstanding. And they've done it without Jadavian Clowney, who's been hurt since week one. Yeah, and early in week one, too. I think in the first quarter, he had his injury, and he'll be out for the next four to six weeks, roughly. That's one of those injuries where, you know, I thought it was going to set them back, but really they've only responded well. I mean, they're deep on defense. Granted, they're going to play a weak schedule, but if they continue to play a weak schedule the way they are, and the, they're playing well, there's no reason that team couldn't make a push towards the playoffs. I know two weeks is early, but it's nice to see a team start 2-0 and like the Texans. And it's really opened things up in the AFC South, which we always just figured at the beginning of the year would, you know, be the Colts and only the Colts and then a huge talent discrepancy there. But Jacksonville has you've shown a little bit of promise. They, they played well in the first half against Philadelphia in week one. Obviously, you were just talking about how good Houston's been, and the Colts haven't been as good as people expected. Granted, they have opened up the season with two tough games, but the loss of Robert Mathis, who was already going to miss the first four games of the season, but the fact that he's out for the entire season with that, excuse me, with that Achilles injury is going to kill this Colts defense, which already was not elite, and without have, or losing their top pass rusher, a guy that led the NFL in sacks with 19 and a half sacks last year, it's going to be impossible to replace, and the Colts are going to have to overcompensate now on offense for the lack of production they're going to get on defense. You know, and I wouldn't, p hit the, yeah, I wouldn't hit the panic button yet in Indianapolis, but you know, if they somehow lose their next game against the Jacksonville Jaguars this weekend, that's where you're hitting the panic button. You start 0-3, but you brought up the fact they opened up with the Broncos. They opened up with the uh, Philadelphia Eagles in Indy. That, those are two tough games to start out with. Hopefully they get a break with the Jaguars this weekend who lost 41-10 to on the road in Washington this week despite RG3 going down early in the game. You mentioned uh, the Philly team that uh, beat Indianapolis and then they came back against the Jacksonville Jaguars during week one. After being down 17, they scored the next 34 what have you thought of the Eagles so far? Because a lot of people around the league are saying, oh, the Eagles have been excellent because they've been able to come back. But I've been more concerned, not, not, I mean, as an Eagles fan, I would be concerned at their lack of production in the first half of games. How much are they going to be able to rely on explosive halves to come back and win football games down the stretch? As long as Chip Kelly is your head coach and you have weapons like Darren Sproles in your backfield, along with LaShawn McCoy, that's just such a deadly combination, first of all. Uh, you can rely on a lot of second-half comebacks, but... It can't be too comfortable right now knowing how badly your team has played in the first half, especially on the offensive side of the ball. I mean, Nick Foles really struggled against uh, the Jacksonville Jaguars, who have proved to be a step down on defense. And then, you know, in the first half against Indy, another defense, like you said, not elite, missing a lot of key players like Robert Mathis. 
they've struggled. But at the same time, they come out and they show a, you know, an explosive nature uh, in the second half to win both games. Right now, it's not really the way you play. It's just how many games can you win early on in the season. I think more will be said for the Philadelphia Eagles as the season develops and the season goes on because we'll learn more about them as a team. And that's one team that I will be really curious to watch them play going forward. We talked about last week some of the uh, divisional races around the NFL and how nearly all of the NFC division races are going to be tight with the Saints and the Panthers in the South, the 49ers, the Seahawks, and even the Cardinals now in the West. And then in the North, you have Green Bay and Detroit. The East, we sort of disregarded, saying, you know, Philly's more talented. They're going to win that. They should win that. The Cowboys are not good. You know, Washington's a mess. The Giants are a mess. And we just sort of took for granted that Philly was going to run away with it. But they have shown some of those weaknesses. And now with Robert Griffin the third out, the Redskins are going to have Kirk Cousins at quarterback, which frankly, a lot of people think of that is a an lot upgrade. of people think that that's going to be better. They're going to be able to run a more traditional offense. They're not going to have to adjust to RG three like they did in the past. Is this NFC East race open now, or is it still Phillies to lose? Still Phillies to lose. I think Dallas. You're seeing an inconsistent Cowboys team once again. <laughs> Uh, I don't know how much you want to rely on Kirk Cousins. Uh, we've seen them struggle against teams like the Texans. I, th I don't know if they can move the ball on great defenses. They're going to have Philly to... does not have a great defense, though. Their strength is on the offensive side of the ball. Yeah, but I think it, I look at it this way. The Eagles went on the road and beat Andrew Luck and the Colts. No matter how you know beat up that defense is in Indy, that, that, that was a tough win. I think they have the best resume so far, so they have to be considered the favorites. But Washington looks like they are, will they will be that challenger, and you can't really rule out Dallas for a second place finish. I mean, how many years has it been in a row where Dallas, Three. you know, plays in a championship game? I think back in 2011, 2012, 2013. Why not 2014? The Dallas Cowboys playing one of those other three teams uh, to end the NFC East uh, championship season. So that's all we have for this episode of Game Nine. I'm Stephen Nixon. He's Pearson Fowler. Thanks for watching and. Continue watching more videos on youtube.com slash Network.